what's up everybody welcome back so in the last episode we did the tracing for the weapons and we have the damage setup and things like that so in this episode we're going to take a look at the montages and then also the muscle flash the fire sound and maybe even the impact effects so we're going to make sure everything looks a little bit more interesting the first thing I want to do for the montages uh, is change the setup a little bit. So at the beginning we set up our animation blueprint. And in here we actually have a boolean in the animation graph where we play the fire animations. So we're simply looping those. And this will make it so they use the timing of the fire animations. So if we set this bool to true, it will simply loop this animation. And if this animation takes point three seconds for example then that's the rate it will play at and i want to change it so we're using montages and we simply trigger a new montage to play each time we fire the weapon so it looks a little bit better and quote unquote realistic so that's what we want to do first and to do that we need to make the montages for the firing so we're going to go to the animation starter pack and look for the fire animations and then we have fire hip iron sights and also the shotgun hip and the iron sights and we're not going to worry about prone for now so let's open this up and we want to make sure these are mass space additive so we probably already did that for the hip animations but make sure so mass space additive frame from this animation and then the reference frame is zero and you want to do it for all four animations so the iron sights as well and then the shotgun is probably not set up yet so for this one, we're also going to set mass space additive and then a frame from this animation, frame zero. And also for the shotgun iron sights. So those all have the same settings. And then we can go back to the content browser and simply create montages for all of them. So select all four and then right click, create animation montage. I'm going to hit enter so it will open up all four of the montages and we're going to create a new slot to play the montages in. No. Uh, so we want to go to the animation slot manager over here and if it's not there you can go to window and then open it from here animation slot manager and we're going to add a new slot in here and that's our additive fire animation for example so additive fire and after we created it, we're going to assign it over here. Slot name, additive fire. And do the same thing for all four of them. So all four play on the additive fire slot. And then there's one thing we want to do as well. If we take a look at these animations, they are very short. So this is 0.23 seconds. And if we take a look at the blend in and blend out times uh, combined, those are half a second. So if we don't change the blend in and blend out times, uh, you will hardly see anything playing. So what we can do is simply open them in the bulk editor. So let's save everything. I have all four selected, right click, go to asset actions, and then bulk edit via property matrix. In here, we want to change the blend options and then blend in. Nope. So the blend in time is going to be 0 0.05 seconds and the blend out time is also going to be 0 0.05. And now we have them changed on all four at the same time. So we can close this down and then we want to go back to the animation blueprint, the animation graph. So over here, this part where we are firing, we can simply get rid of this part. And we're going to grab our slot. So uh, let's grab a slot node and simply plug that in over here and connect it back up. So for this slot, we want to select the additive fire animations over here and then we should be good to go. And because we removed that part, we're also not using the is firing boolean anymore. So we can simply get rid of that bool as well to clean things up a little bit. So is firing, remove that one as well. Compile and save. So we have the montages and the animation blueprint good to go. Let's take a look at what we need to do inside of the character. And we don't actually need to do anything inside of the character. Uh, we want to go to the weapon component, obviously. 
So we're going to open that one, weapons data, and then the AI weapon component. Let's go to the event graph. So in here we have the fire weapon loop event, and this runs on the server only. And after each time we fired a trace or a projectile or whatever, uh, we want to make sure that we play the fire sound and all of the FXs and things like that. And for that, we're going to use a, a variable with a rep notify. And a rep notify is kind of like a multicast event. So if the variable changes, that will fire a function on all clients as well. And inside of that function, we can do the things that we want to do. So we're going to create a new variable and let's call this one trigger weapon fired. So it's a boolean, that's good. And then on the right side for replication, we're going to set it to rep notify. And if we do that, it will create a function automatically called on rep and then the name of the function, uh, the name of the variable. So this function will fire on all clients and the server uh, when we set this variable to another uh, value so what we want to do after we fire the weapon and then right before the fire time delay we're going to grab a setter for the trigger weapon fired and we're simply going to flip the bool around so we're also going to grab a getter and then we're going to hook up a not boolean so if it's false we're going to set it to true and vice versa and that will make this function fire each time we fire the weapon and in here we can play the fx and the sounds and things like that because this will automatically run on all instances so we can add a comment in here and say all instances and let's play the muscle flash fx first so we're going to drag it off and spawn an emitter attached and we're going to attach it to the weapon. So that's the skeletal mesh component. That's actually a reference to our self. So attached to component self. The emitter template, we're going to turn that into a variable. And we don't have it yet. So we're going to drag off here and promote to variable. That's our muzzle flash FX. And the muzzle socket, we already have that one. So we can drag it in from the variables. That's the attach point name. And for the location type, we want to snap to target. And let's say keep world scale, that should be fine. So that's the muzzle flash. Then we want to play a fire sound. So we're going to drag off here again and play sound at location. And the sound that we want to play is a variable again. So drag off here, promote variable. That's the fire sound. So all of this stuff we're going to add to our primary data asset later. And the location we want to play it is at the location of the muzzle socket. So we're going to drag in the muzzle socket and then get the socket location. Plug it in over here. And I'm going to lower the volume a little bit, but that's uh, simply personal so do whatever you want to over there so we have a muzzle flash and a fire sound and then we want to play the montage so for that we want to get the animation instance and then drag off here and do montage play so with this node we can actually play a montage from inside a function and uh, we want to promote the montage again to a variable but we also want to determine if we are aiming or not so if we are quote unquote adsing uh, to make sure that we play the correct animation so we can drag off the montage to play and use a select node and then for the wildcard we're actually going to use a boolean so we're going to create a new variable and call that is aiming that's a bool and for this one we want to set the replication so it's going to be a replicated variable and plug it into the wildcard so if this is false we want to promote this to a variable and that's our fire montage for hip fire so fire montage hip and then we also have a fire montage for aiming so promote that to a variable and that's fire montage aim there we go so this node should be good play rate uh, yeah we don't need to change anything in there 
and this should actually make things work um so we do need to set up some defaults inside of the component over here because we don't have it linked up to the primary data asset yet so for the muscle flash fx uh, let's use the assault rifle muscle flash why not fire sound we want to look for a rifle fire and in here you want to add the sound cue and then for the montages so we have fire montage hip let's use rifle hip and then for aiming we're going to use rifle iron sight okay so with the defaults in place we should be ready to test this part so let's hit play he will already start firing but only if we are in focus he will actually trace but you will see a fire animation playing and we have a muzzle flash and we have fire sounds <clears throat> So that part is already working and this also works in multiplayer so if we grab two players then the sounds and effects and the montage should replicate so let's make sure that the dude is actually firing at us and then grab the client and have a look and we can see the muzzle flash for the client and we can also see the fire animation playing and we hear the sounds as well so that part is already working that was pretty simple and the next thing we want to do is take a look at the impact effects probably so for the impact effects uh, let's take a look at our fire weapon bullet trace for example so over here we're going to end up with an array of out hits and these uh, hit result structures will contain the locations where we want to play our impact effects but uh, this hit result structure uh, contains a whole lot of other information as well that we don't really need so if we take a look at this so we only need the location and the impact uh, normal and all of the other stuff we don't need and this is actually a variable that we do want to replicate one of the few variables that we replicate uh, because the server is the only one tracing and it needs to replicate the results to the client so we can do a little bit of optimi optimization and create a new structure that only contains the location and the rotation where we want to play the impact of X. So that's something that we're going to do first. And let's go to the weapons data folder. That's fine. Right click, go to blueprints and then create a new structure. And I'm going to call this the S underscore weapon impacts. And this structure is going to contain two vectors. So the first one is the location of the impact. That's a vector. And the second one is the normal of the impact. So the angle, basically. And that's also a vector. Save the structure. And then we can go back to our weapon component. And inside of the weapon component, we're going to create a new variable. So that's our weapon impacts structure. And we want to turn that into the structure we just created. So weapon impacts and then turn it into an array. And this is also replicated. So make sure we have it selected and on the right side set it to replicate it. So with that variable in place, we can go to the fire weapon bullet trace function where I am over here now. And then at the end, right before the return node, we're going to create an array of that new weapon impact structure. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a for each loop and let's move over the pins. So we have the return node out of the way. We're going to loop through all of our out hits. So plug that one in over here. So these are all of the hits that are valid hits returned by the process hit function. And from here, we can simply break the structure. And then we're going to make a local array first. So we're going to create a local variable and let's call this local weapon impacts. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this in a sec. Uh, so we have the local array. We're going to drag that in and we're going to add an item to it. Plug that into the loop body and drag off here to make a structure. And we can simply grab the location from the hit result and the normal from the hit result. 
And once we have this entire array set up, then we're going to set it inside of our replicated array. So we're going to grab a setter for the replicated array, plug it into the completed pin, and we're going to plug in our local array. So we could technically uh, just plug in our replicated variable over here, but then it will replicate each time we set it over here in this loop body. So if we have a uh, an array of 20 hits over here for example it will replicate the uh, array 20 times and if we simply create a non-replicated local array over here and then only set it once after we are completed uh, that will save a bunch of replication that we don't need so that's why i'm using a local array over here and then only set the replicated variable once and once this is done then we can hook our return node back up like so so now each time we fired, we have an array with our weapon impacts. And with that in place, we can go to our onwrap trigger weapon fired. So the wrap notify function. And in here, we only want to play this impact affix if we are firing a trace weapon, uh, because a projectile actually handles it a little bit differently. So we're going to grab our weapon type and we're going to drag off here and do a switch. Plug it in. And if we are a projectile, we're not going to do anything. If we are a trace weapon, we're going to loop through the weapon impact. So we're going to grab it for each loop, plug it in over here, grab our weapon impact and hook it up. And simply spawn an emitter at location. So for the loop body, spawn emitter at location. And we can break our array element. So break the impact structure and hook up the location and the normal. And this will return, uh, convert it into a vector for us. So that should work. And for the emitter template, I'm simply going to select one. So I'm not going to worry about different uh, impact types or things like that. So let's use the impact metal medium. Now, uh, what you could do, for example, is add the physical surface to the weapon impacts array so for the trace result you get a physical material sorry not physical surface and from here you can get a surface type and you can set up all surface types in different materials and then depending on the surface that you hit you can play a different impact affix so you can set things up a little bit more advanced like that if you want to. Uh, for now, I'm simply going to play one impact affix. Uh, it doesn't matter what we hit. So uh, just a little side note over there. And then when this is completed, we can return. And if we are a projectile, we're simply going to hook it up over here as well. Um, so yeah, that should pretty much work. So let's compile and save and let's double check it. We have two players, so that should be good. And let's make sure we get shot at. So we can see the impact of it playing over here. That is good to go. And we don't do we get impact fix if we are already hit so that's a little bit hard to say i think we have the impact uh, the the penetration for the weapon set to zero so technically if we are hit uh, it should not play a trace behind us on the wall but not each trace is hitting us obviously so that's a little bit hard to determine so this one now, if we get hit by the character, the impact of it over here is not playing. So this trace missed. So that's why it's playing impact of it over here. So that's actually working as intended. And you can also see the impact of it for the client. So are, they are also replicating as they should. So that's working as well. We have the impact of it, fire sound, muzzle flash and montage set up. So that's uh, nice. And it wasn't too much work, to be honest. Now, uh, I think I'm going to cut it off at this point, because in the next episode, we're going to set up the projectiles and I want to keep all of that separated. So this is a little bit of a shorter video, but the next one is probably going to be a little bit longer to make up for that. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back soon for more later.